All right, well, first off, I'm not a plumber, so you're watching this at your own risk. So, but I will tell you what I learned of both from YouTube videos and from reading stuff online. I just installed a water heater uh, in my home and uh, it was leaking at the top. This particular one has the, uh, the pressure relief valve on the top as opposed to being on the side. I, I should take that back. The one I replaced had it on the top. This one has it on the side. Um, anyway, this also had a $200 rebate in the state of California for energy efficiency. Um, I needed to replace, by the way, I think this may, the old one may have uh, failed because the expansion tank that was up here, and I have it down here on the ground now, I've since taken it off. I went outside before I turned the water off the water main and I, I had 60 pounds of pressure in my, in my home. And you want to be sure you take that uh, pressure with a pressure gauge, like this one I bought at uh, Home Depot. It's a uh, Rainbird uh, brand and it was uh, 10 bucks. And I had 60 pounds of pressure at the spigot outside my house. And uh, I had uh, what I found to be 50 pounds on this up here, uh, a little over 50 pounds using a uh, regular tire gauge. Um, then I went ahead and shut the uh, water main off I drained down the uh, like the sink in my garage, for example, and one inside the kitchen, uh, so that I got all the pressure out of the uh, of the lines. And then I removed this expansion tank, <clears throat> and I went ahead and put a gauge on it, and found out that it had zero pressure. We've been in this home for three years. It's a ten-year-old home, and who knows how long it's been like that. It may have been the reason why my water heater failed after only uh, well ten years. And it was a good one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it with a new one. This particular one that I also got at uh, Home Depot is around $70. Um, it's a Watts brand. Um, and it is, I think, four and a half gallons. And it is designed for a 50-gallon water heater like this is. And I'm going to uh, go ahead and take it out of the box. First thing you notice, of course, is that... Uh, the one that was installed in the home originally is 2.1 gallons, and uh, which is, this is a track home here. Uh, they're nice homes, but uh, you know these contractors will put in the, the crappiest stuff that they can get at bulk uh, from their vendors. And uh, I've gone with one that's much larger. Um, it's not that much more money. You're only talking about $25 more than say perhaps this one, <clears throat> and it's four and a half gallons. This is the end that has the the air valve on it. You're going to want to hold on to this because you're going to want to put this back on after you fill the tank with air. I don't know how much pressure is in this tank uh, from the factory, but it'll be that it sits around 40. Let me set the phone down and give it a shot. Yeah, it appears that they didn't put any air in it, but I'm going to boost this thing up to 60 because that is what my Rainbird gauge told me outside when I put this on the spigot. So I have 60 pounds of pressure coming into the home in my lines and I want to be sure that this matches this pressure uh, before I install it uh, up on the ceiling. You can fire up your, uh, your air compressor if you want or you can just use a bicycle pump even though this has a gauge on it. Uh, I'll be using the tire gauge. Just kind of compare and not just rely on this bicycle pump. But I'm just going to go ahead and pump this thing up as soon as I get a better seal on it, uh, up to 60 pounds. Okay, I have checked it and it is at uh, 60 pounds on here. And I also checked it with my gauge. And actually they're reading uh, both the same. And I'll tell you, pumping this thing up to 60 pounds without a uh, compressor, which I'd smart, I'd have used it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm ready to uh, install it on the ceiling after I Put some Teflon tape around the threads and a little pipe dope, a little added uh, pipe dope. I'll put it up on the ceiling there and uh, I'll it'll turn it hand tight on there and then get a little snug with a, uh, with a wrench. You don't need to bear down on this thing because you're going to test it to see if it's leaking after you uh, turn your water main back on. So let's get busy with that. Another thing I'm doing is I'm taking this tool 
and I'm just cleaning these threads out that are inside just to be sure I got any other old dope or Teflon tank that was on the other on the old tank. Get that all cleaned up and nice and shiny. All right, I got a couple wraps on there with my Teflon tape. I got a little dope I'm gonna put on there just as a precaution. Probably don't need it, but it doesn't hurt. And we'll get her up there on the ceiling. Okay, I got that up there and I tightened it up like I would tighten up an oil filter on my truck. Pretty hand tight. I have not taken a wrench to it, but uh, I might just do that just to kind of get a better feel. I get a better feel about how much torque's on there with a wrench. And then we'll go outside and turn on the, the water main. Get this system back up where it should be, matching 60 pounds to 60 pounds. All right, so I uh, turned on the water main outside and I uh, double checked the threads on this and I've been watching it now for about 10 minutes or so, you know, just to make sure that there's no drips coming down because if there is, I'm going to have to go ahead and turn the water main back off, relieve the pressure in the pipes in the house and uh, slowly take that back off or, uh, you know, maybe re, uh, re uh, put some more tape on it or some dope or whatever, but just find out why. Maybe it's not catching all the threads or something, but this one here is looking really good. And then I went ahead and ran, turned on the water main uh, uh, or the water valve that goes into the tank back here back on. So, and uh, so I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, the other one I actually wrote to do not use on it. I'm going to put it in the trash so if anybody ever picks it up, they won't try and use it in case it's unsafe. And like I told you, I'm not a plumber. Don't claim to be. And uh, I pulled this out of the box, the directions, <laughs> after I put that one in. And uh, because I got most of the information like you are right now uh, online. But uh, probably would have been better if I had read these directions beforehand. I don't think I missed any steps, but... Uh, and don't forget to fill out the warranty card on this and maybe save the UPC off the box in case it does fail or for some reason uh, you've got a record of it. I'm also going to write on the outside of this with an indelible ink like a you know one of those markers uh, the date that I installed it uh, so I can see if it fails again I'll know how long it's been up there. That's about it. Take this for what you can and uh, do it yourself. That cost me uh, probably 200 bucks to have a plumber come out here and put that thing in. It took me all of about maybe 25 minutes to get it from the time I opened the box to the time I installed it. Save yourself some money, do it yourself. It's an easy project. Anybody can do it. And uh, good luck.